trying to change gear quickly will often lead to some very jerky gear changes. So in this video, I'm gonna give you some tips on how you can change gear quickly whilst keeping it smooth. One of the most important things you can do to have a nice smooth and quick gear change is to reduce the acceleration before you clutch down. If you clutch down mid acceleration, that's gonna jerk everyone in the car forward. You may be able to see by this thing here as it moves around. So let me demonstrate. So I'm gonna move away now and mid acceleration, I'm just gonna clutch down. You see how much that moves forwards? That jerks everyone in the car forwards. However, if I try and reduce the gas pedal and get a steady speed before I change gear, that will enable me to change gear quickly, yet still smoothly. So this time I'm gonna accelerate, but instead of going straight for the clutch, reduce the gas, then clutch and change gear. See, I'll do that again. I'll accelerate in second gear, reduce the gas to a steady speed, clutch down, and then I can change gear really quite quickly, and it's very smooth. Now, the trouble with this thing is it moves about all the time because of the bumps in the road, but hopefully you could see it jerk more noticeably forward when I did the first method of just pushing the clutch down mid acceleration. But I'm gonna take that off now because it's just always waving around and my steering makes more of an effect than the gear changes. Another thing you can do is make sure you have prepared yourself to change gear. Let me show you what I mean. Part of preparing the change gear is to reduce the gas, but you can also prepare your hand and your foot by covering the clutch and putting your hand over the gear stick. So I'm now ready to change from first to second because I'm fast enough, I've got a steady speed. So I get my foot ready over the clutch and my hand ready over the gear stick. I can clutch down and change gear very quickly without any delay. I'm just gonna slow down now because this car can't see me. Right, I can see his face, he can see me, so I know he's gonna stop. I'll do the same thing now from second to third gear. I'll accelerate, I'll get my foot ready over the clutch, hand ready on the gear stick, steady speed now, clutch down, change the gear, then clutch back up again. That whole gear change there took less than two seconds. I find experienced drivers who can change gear both quickly and smoothly tend to put time into preparing for their gear change. They reduce the gas, they get their foot over the clutch and hand on the gear stick. Let's say it takes them that long to change gear, probably that much is preparation and this much, the little bit at the end, is the actual gear change. Many new drivers make the mistake of putting too much thought into the gear stick because they're afraid of getting it wrong, but it's the pedals that make a good gear change. Sometimes it can be so bad that a new driver will go for the gear stick, forget about the pedals and think, oh yes, I've got to do the pedals as well and just rush the pedals quickly without much thought. That's gonna to lead to some very jerky gear changes. Another tip is to press the clutch down quickly. Pressing the clutch down slowly can make things jerky. So I'm at a steady speed now, my foot's ready over the clutch, my hands over the gear stick, clutch down quick, then off gas. Try to press the clutch down really quickly and then come off the gas pedal. If you come off the gas pedal first, the car may slow down. Although in this car, it's very easy to change gear smoothly because you can come off the gas pedal first and the car doesn't slow down much. And that makes changing gear really easy for beginners, but that doesn't work in all cars. So practice holding a steady speed, clutch down quick, then off gas, and then you can change the gear and lift the clutch back up again with a bit of gas. As for your gear stick, well, you can ram this thing as hard and as fast as you like into gear without too much crunching. Any gearbox built in the last 20 years will take some abuse. However, I don't recommend it because it is abuse and your gearbox won't last as long as it will if you just take about a second to gently and calmly change gear. And also you're more likely to get the correct gear if you do it that way. And after all, a second isn't that long. Gearboxes from 30 plus years ago were far more problematic. So what people used to do is double D clutch to allow themselves to change gear more quickly and reliably. But double D clutching does still take a second and a modern gearbox can easily change gear in a second without any need for that extra effort. I'll leave a link to double D clutching in the top right hand corner of your screen if you're interested in what that is. If you're driving a car that's built within the last 30 years, you really don't need to worry about double D clutching. My next tip will help you lift the clutch up quickly while still being smooth. If you're changing upper gear at around two to two and a half thousand RPM like you'd normally be doing, try and add a little bit of gas before you lift the clutch up to keep the revs between one and one and a half thousand RPM. That will allow you to lift the clutch up quickly and smoothly. So I'm gonna clutch down and off the gas now, move it the second, a little bit of gas to keep the revs there, and then I can lift the clutch up quite quickly and smoothly. 
To give you an idea of how much you need to let the revs drop each time you change gear, well, it depends on how much you rev the car before you change gear. So if you're changing gear at two to two and a half thousand RPM, you probably only want your revs to drop by about a thousand to maybe one to one and a half thousand RPM. But if you're changing up at 4,000 RPM, you're gonna want your revs to drop by about one and a half thousand to about two and a half thousand RPM. And if you're changing up at 6,000 RPM, you want to be letting the revs drop by about 2,000 RPM to 4,000 RPM. One of the things that makes this car easy to drive is the revs drop quite slowly, so I don't actually have to add gas because the revs kind of meet my clutch as my clutch comes up. They've timed it quite well like that. Do that again. See, I'm not pressing the gas yet. I can pretty much drop the clutch and it's smooth, but that's not the case in all cars. Like my Mazda MX-5, the revs drop very quickly in that, so I do have to apply a little bit of gas just to make sure there's some revs there as I lift the clutch up. And here's the Mazda. When I press the clutch down, watch how quickly the revs drop. So I'll press the clutch down now, and by the time I move it to third and bring the clutch up, the revs have already dropped to the bottom and the clutch had to bring the revs up, which is quite jerky. You never really want the clutch bringing the revs up. I'll go back down the second now, and I'll do the same thing again, but I'll hold the gas on just a little bit as I do it, so the revs drop more slowly, and you'll see, gives me time, there you go, to change gear and lift the clutch up before the revs go all the way down to the bottom. Just holding a little bit of gas will make the revs drop more slowly, or, you can add a little bit of gas before you lift the clutch to bring the revs up a little bit, or you can do an upshift throttle blip. I'll link to that in the top right hand corner of your screen. I made a video on that earlier. Now you could just try to change gear really quickly before the revs have a chance to drop, but that's not gonna be very good for your gearbox because you have to do it very quickly in this car because those revs do drop quick, especially when the gear oil is cold it does take me a second or two to move this gear stick into gear nicely. As for changing down gears, well, that's a whole different kettle of fish. You need to actually add revs if you want to lift the clutch quickly after changing down a gear. So I'm about 2000 RPM at the moment and I want to go down to gear two. So as I push the clutch down, I'll hold the gas on, let it rise to about 3000, then I can lift the clutch quite quickly. I'll do that again, so I'll go back up to third gear and I'll do it a bit more quickly this time without explaining it. See, and I can come off the clutch really quickly because I've added some gas and I've raised the revs. How much you need to raise your revs by when you change down a gear does vary from car to car. It's to do with the gear ratios of the car and also where your revs were when you started the downshift. If you're downshifting and your revs are about 2000 rpm when you start your downshift bring them up by a thousand that will get you close in most cars if your revs are all the way down at a thousand when you start your downshift you may only need to raise them by about two to three hundred but if your revs are at three thousand rpm when you went to change down a gear you may need to raise them by about 1500 but you're not going to be doing that too often if you want more information on rev matching which is what this essentially is it enables you to lift the clutch up quite quickly there's a link in the top right hand corner of your screen to a video I made earlier. One thing is for sure, if you try to change gear quickly when you don't have much experience, you'll probably be jerky. Doesn't matter what anybody tells you to do, it probably won't work. To be quick and smooth, you need skill. Take the advice from this video and apply it to your driving, but apply it slowly. Over time, your skill level will increase and therefore, your ability to change gears quickly and smoothly will increase. But start slow and let yourself gradually get quicker. Don't force it all at once. Well, I hope the video helps. If you think it does, please give it a thumbs up. If you're looking for insurance, check out Conningwood and Confused.com in the description. Conningwood are great if you want to insure yourself on somebody else's car because you can do so without affecting the owner's policy. Via the link, there's up to 35% off at the moment and a £20 Amazon gift card. Confused are great because you can fill out one quote form and get loads of quotes back from different insurers to compare prices. And you can change the car on that quote form as many times as you like, which allows you to compare how much it costs to insure different cars. Using the links in the description doesn't cost you anything, but it does support this channel. So thank you very much. You can also check out Facebook and Instagram. Feel welcome to do that. They're both Conquer Driving and subscribe to get my future videos. And until the next one, 
cheerio.